My name is Pierre Giulianotti. I'm a chief uh, of robotic surgery at the University of Illinois in Chicago. And uh, the history of robotics and uh, how I, I got involved in this and when I got involved, I think it's a very long one. I started being interested uh, early on in Italy. It was in the late 90s. Uh, about uh, minimal invasive surgery, the possibility of doing a, a less invasive operation. But early on I understood that uh, human hands and uh, their limitations. And, uh, and uh, I attended a, a big conference in Hamburg, Germany, and uh, I saw some uh, early prototypes. I immediately thought uh, that is the future. Uh, I think you can overcome uh, majority of limitations, uh, not only of human hands, but human mind, uh, introducing uh, electronics and digital interaction. So when I came back to Italy, it was uh, 1999, um, I immediately contacted uh, uh, Intuitive, that at the time it was a small company in California on the edge of being uh, bankrupted. And, uh, I started in the way. In a few, year, few years, uh, I was able to do major operations like uh, Whipples, gastrectomies, uh, pneumonectomies. And I'm a general surgeon, so I have a, a broad uh, foundation. And I started applying robotic techniques uh, in uh, multiple indications. Uh, in a few years, uh, I became an expert, and uh, this is why I had a chance of uh, moving to the United States and move to Chicago. It was a 2007. Uh, it was a really pioneeristic uh, time. Patients, they were initially very skeptical. But, of course, I had to spend time saying, uh, it's not really a robot uh, that is making operation autonomously. It's a kind of uh, a technological laparoscopy. And uh, uh, if they explain it in that way, patients, they usually perceive technology in a positive way. It's such a wonderful... Uh, journey uh, to be inside human body and uh, to admire uh, the beauty of, uh, of the human body. And uh, uh, robotics allows me to be more respectful of the anatomy in this uh, marvelous journey. The advantage of having a powerful uh, platform like the robots that is not only amplification of your mechanical skills uh, but also the ability of seeing better, uh, seeing uh, magnified uh, in a magnified way, uh, having a implemented uh, uh, vision uh, with uh, overlapping uh, fusion of images, uh, the ability of uh, uh, doing a perfect operation is much enhanced. In the pancreas, I did uh, the first worldwide Whipple. Uh, that is a pretty challenging operation, usually done for cancer where you have to dismount the head of the pancreas, and that is a very complex organ uh, requiring uh, sophisticated surgical skills. And so to do that in a minimal invasive way, it's a big, uh, a big task. But I think robotics, it, it makes uh, the operation easier for many other surgeons to come. And uh, the other field is in transplant. And uh, I did uh, the first uh, uh, living donor hepatectomy, robotic, uh, for um, uh, the preparation of uh, half of the liver from a donor and then uh, uh, and to prepare uh, for a transplant. And that was a pretty challenging operation. And uh, also the first uh, uh, full robotic implant of a kidney. So uh, the first uh, uh, kidney transplantation done robotically, minimal invasive, and that in particular, uh, um, I, I think it changed uh, the outcomes of this operation in a very high risk uh, uh, group of population that is obese patient, uh, that usually are uh, refused or discarded uh, uh, for the kidney transplant because uh, the operation done open is quite challenging. Uh, and with a lot of complication, uh, wound infections. So the possibility of uh, introducing the graft uh, with a small incision of Bodium bellicus uh, and being able uh, to uh, implant the kidney 
uh, minimizing uh, the consequence of this operation allowed that this group of population, the obese, that is a, is a growing part of uh, uh, our population, uh, really changed uh, the indication for this operation and the outcomes of this operation. You put your kidney in. Uh, the space uh, where you can make uh, the anastomosis is limited. It's not that you might use the entire length of the iliac gap because it's the anatomy of the kidney and uh, you cannot take uh, too much of an angle, otherwise uh, you have a bad uh, in, in flow in, into the transplant. And as a third comment, uh, it's not true that you don't have a completely tactile feedback. You have a kind of indirect tactile feedback. If you have experience and if you're using uh, the back of two graspers uh, and uh, you are touching, uh, you see the modification of the line of the wall. Uh, and so you are able to make uh, a, a, in that little segment where you can do the anastomosis, uh, you can make your choice based on this indirect side time feedback. What does the future hold for minimally invasive? I think in the future we have to accept that. We have to accept that some, someone I might like or someone I might don't like. But we have to accept the fact that artificial intelligence and uh, robotics uh, uh, will be part of our destiny. Without that, uh, um, we wouldn't be able to progress. I think uh, what happened in the Olympics, you know, uh, I, I think we are uh, working uh, on uh, milliseconds now because uh, in running uh, some of the competition, uh, uh, we reached our limitations. You know. we, we, we cannot run 100 meters uh, in uh, five seconds. Uh, n nobody, even uh, the most uh, talented athlete, uh, would be able to, because there are limitations of our structures, our mind. And, uh, so if you want to do better, and or if you want to deal with the complexity that uh, the new world uh, uh, will bring uh, to us, uh, the only way is to have an alliance uh, with uh, um, artificial intelligence and robotics. Mm -hmm. I think in this period, uh, uh, there are so many uh, facts happening around the world, and uh, uh, we should be pessimistic, you know, looking at uh, humanity is taking uh, wrong directions, and uh, we are destroying this planet. And, uh, and sometimes uh, you're asking if it's right not to invest uh, all uh, our energies uh, to improve the quality of life. And, uh, it's exactly 30 years ago. The Vaticuti Foundation has been uh, uh, Mr. Vaticuti with uh, his generosity and uh, his uh, perspective mind uh, has been uh, an inspiration for us. Uh, always uh, to try to improve uh, the medical outcomes uh, even with the lat latest technology, but always thinking about uh, applications uh, for the most, uh, for, for the majority of people. So something uh, that is not a niche, uh, a, a niche for uh, a small selected uh, 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 patients, uh, but something that might benefit potentially the entire humanity. There are so many beautiful things. and. Uh, when uh, you sit down uh, and you admire a masterpiece uh, like uh, the Sistine Chapel of Michelangelo and uh, you yeah, have a reconciliation uh, with humans, uh, the humans, they can be really uh, very good. They can do beautiful things, uh, marvelous uh, pieces of art. And uh, so it's worth it to save humanity. It's worth it to make progresses uh, and uh, to look for the good and for the better.